Lolita was taken from the wild over three decades ago to be trained and put on display. Today, she is the remaining survivor of the Puget Sound roundups. On August 8, 1970, Lolita and her family were swimming peacefully off the coast of Washington State en route to a ritual gathering of the Orca Nations. Every year, the Orca pods of the Northwest make the long pilgrimage to Possession Sound for the celebration. But for Lolita, the day took a tragic turn. She and 10 other family members would never make it to this or any other family reunion again. As the pod of more than 100 whales moved through the inlet, legendary Orca trainer Ted Griffin and his capture team quickly gave chase. Speedboats roared out to greet the pod. An assault of explosives quickly ensued. Deafening bombs exploded around the family as boats and small aircraft attempted to herd the disoriented whales into Puget Sound's Penn Cove Inlet. Attempting to protect their young, mature whales instinctively split into two groups and sent decoys to distract hunters from the infants and adolescents. The decoys tried to lead the hunters on a wild chase away from the pod, but pursuers were relentless, hurling nets into the water and trapping the panicked family in Penn Cove Inlet. The air was thick with the sound of screaming whales as they thrashed in the tangled nets. Piercing shrills were heard for miles, according to local residents Lila Snover and Barbara Stevens. The sounds they made were what we really noticed. But what you really felt were the, the cries of the both the small ones and the adult ones. And I remember one day I stopped over there right close to them with my children that were very small at the time. And they kept saying, why are they crying? They're crying. It just broke your heart, everybody that saw them. And you kept wanting them to let them go. What harassing them. There was a group of people that uh, even contemplated going out in small boats, like in the dark, and trying to cut the net and set the orcas loose. But they were being guarded all day and all night by people on the boats with rifles. They would pretty much shoot anybody who showed up and tried to uh, free them. It was terrible. It was just terrible. You felt like it was uh, a prison camp. It was awful. And I think everybody that remembers it will tell you that. This is one of the most horrible things I've ever witnessed in my life. And became dedicated to orcas in general and Lolita particularly since then. Yes. Adolescents from two to seven years old, the perfect age for capture and training, were quickly separated from their mothers and prepared for extraction. While desperately trying to reach her child through the twisted nets, one mother drowns one last glimpse of her infant being dragged away and she closes her blowhole and sinks lifelessly into the murky water. Her body was later discovered by reporters. John Crow was just 18 when he was hired to aid in the capture and he remembers it very well. Corrals were set up with net going down to the bottom on all sides. And then you have to figure a way to separate the animals because you only want the little ones. And when you see that there's some little ones on one side and uh, maybe there's more on one side than the other, then you take off with another boat and run a net and separate those. Also, you leave a, a circular net out to keep some whales in it because as long as there's one whale in captivity, the rest of them won't leave. Interesting. Four youngsters also died in the assault. While charging the nets in final attempts to reach their mothers, they drowned. But their deaths were kept from the public eye. In a covert midnight mission, the bodies were weighted and hauled out to sea for secret disposal. 
they had us slit them open and fill them with rocks and put anchors on their tail and we sank them at that point. Their bodies mysteriously washed up on shore on November 18, 1970, making national headlines and inciting public outrage. The outrage later inspired Washington state government to ban orca captures in Puget Sound for good. Surviving youths were lashed, hoisted onto boats, and dragged to shore, never to see their family again. A family unit as old as time was suddenly crippled forever. My job, along with another guy, was to uh, get her in a stretcher. And that was the bad part, because that was our last whale. So as soon as we left with her where they started breaking down the rest of the outfit and they released them then but they didn't leave they came right over the beach and they just just kind of milled about there and uh, they were communicating back and forth with the squeaks and shrieks that they do and uh, they call it spy hopping now and the whale sticks his head up and looks around and they were they were doing that actually i kind of broke down and started crying. I kept working, but it was really too much for me to deal with at that point. And uh, we kept on anyway and uh, got the whale loaded and they picked it up. The instant that whale cleared the water, where the sound, I suppose, didn't transmit through the water anymore, the whole rest of the pod of whales that were there just kind of like gave a big sigh and just swam off. That was the end of that. During the commotion at Penn Cove, the call went out to aquariums around the world, proclaiming there were whales for sale in Puget Sound. It was the largest whale capture in history. Seven youngsters were caught in all. Two went to Japan, one each to Texas, Australia, the UK, and France, and one six-year-old female to Miami.